Alrighty, hello. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sam. I am the billing lead here at PDP, if you don't know. So I wanna welcome you all to this meeting. Um, I wanna wish you all a very early Merry Christmas and I hope you guys are doing good. Um, we have a few things to talk about today. It's gonna be an open floor. Peter's gonna start us off and then we're gonna get to the names. Yes, thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, just a short, brief overall update. Um, yes, uh, we are moving to the new location um, this week. We're waiting until the certificate of occupancy goes through, uh, but uh, the inspections, everything has been passed, and we're just waiting for, you know, the CO. Um, but yes, Yay. thank you. <laughs> a long time coming. <laughs> Right now, uh, let's switch to Q and A. Um, you know, it's Christmas. Um, anybody wants to share anything, any comments, any uh, questions that y'all have, uh, please speak up or forever hold your peace. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> please. Yes. Uh, the house and stuff going back to democratic control, is that going to affect trucking uh i was really kind of hoping that the republicans would have taken control because i know it would have you know been a little better for us but with the way the political power is going now do you see still more of a downhill slide because we both know what's going to happen in the next year or so when it comes time for the presidential election but in, in your mind, what do you see happening in the beginning of the year when these new seats get filled? Uh -huh. no. Yes, that is a great question, Daryl. Yes, um, market, it has to do with the market. Um, man, that is a very, very good question. And yes, uh, with all the polit politics and everything that's going on, what about the trucking? What about what you know, matters to you and me, really, you know, the first thing that matters is, you know, how is it going to reflect? And um, I've been, you know, catching up on, uh, you know, updates from, uh, you know, different sources. And uh, I have a good friend uh, uh, who I feel like has really good knowledge about politics and the economy wise and read a couple articles about this and attended some stuff too. But long story short, in my opinion, um, in many ways, uh, regardless of, you know, the specific details, um, you know, it's probably, it's probably really exactly what we wanted has happened because, um, in many ways, the, um, when the government is split up, uh, oh no, I'm trying to figure out how to approach this. So as everybody knows, there's three uh, you know, bodies that uh, control the United States. You got the uh, judiciary, you know, the House and Senate, uh, and then the president. And, um, you know, to really uh, look back uh, at the last, you know, two, three presidents that we've had, uh, anybody who controlled a lot of that or majority of it, judiciary is here and there, but if one party controlled majority of all of those, then they could do pretty much anything. And that's when you had the uncertainty. And as you know, economy does not like uncertainty. So um, when we had everything, uh, you know, uh, during Trump era, when we had everything towards Republican side, there was a lot of, uh, you know, push on policies and everything on that side. Uh, in the last two years, uh, when it was uh, Biden administration, uh, you know, and they held ha uh, House and Senate, it was in many ways towards that side. So long story short, um, we, uh, at least I was hoping that uh, it will be, uh, you know, like right now, there's just been too many money printed. And uh, I mean, for us, the truckers, we need some stability. We, and the economy needs some stability. So how can you do that? Well, the best thing you can do is, um, you know, since the president, the White House is Democrat, if you have 
House or Senate or both Republican, you know, then there's not there's going to be a gridlock. And you heard me talk about this, which is exactly what we've gotten. Yes, it's not, you know, uh, you can debate on exactly what the difference is between if Senate uh, was also a Republican or not. But regardless, because the House is, even though uh, it's very close, but there is a majority on Republican. So that gridlock will uh, allow us for some stability for at least the next two years. What does that mean to us? It means that uh, most likely we will have, um, you know, just um, everything that's been going on because of uh, COVID, uh, because of, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to put any blame on anybody specifically. I'm just speaking, you know, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, everybody can agree that we've had a wild ride, <laughs> right? I mean, just in all over the, I mean, just uh, too, too much extremes. And uh, <laughs> economy reflects it <laughs> pretty much. So now if we have this gridlock, it will help us to stabilize for at least two years until whatever happens in 2024. And um, yeah, now as far as will it hit, uh, will it still continue down or not? Um, historically, as you know, there's, uh, you know, I always talk about the three different cycles. You got the yearly cycle, the four year cycle approximately, and then, you know, eight to 12 year cycle, the economic cycle. So, you know, on the yearly cycle, the first quarter is always slower. So, I mean, we might see, or I, I wouldn't say might, we definitely will see some kind of drop. However, However, I wouldn't uh, say that it's um, um, the people that's been uh, hearing uh, and preparing. Uh, it's not like you're going to be out of business like we did in uh, April of 2020, because in my opinion, April 2020 is the worst thing that could happen. And that's if you remember, the whole country was shut down because of COVID. So that happening is very unlikely, which is good news. Um, but uh, even if it does slow down, uh, it's just a matter of, um, you know, switching gears to the places where you can make money. OK, maybe during right now season in December, you know, it's not I wouldn't say it's really great right now with rates. Um, but uh, there's some pros about uh, being in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, so we might have a smaller um, aerial map to work with, um, you know, next quarter. However, I don't see that it will be anything close to April, which, you know, April of 2020 was something bad that like literally companies went out of business. And that's something that I mean, it's just unheard of you know you had to you you were getting paid like 60 cents per mile like <laughs> i've seen loads like that pop up like that's just crazy stupid you know um yes but anyway long story short we might see uh you know uh, depending on which area you are um we might see some drop uh, uh in um, um um in demand but it's a very important not to go, ah, you know, all of a sudden and, uh, okay, L uh, switch over temporarily to the area where it, where it will be good. And it's just a matter of living through the winter. After that, uh, I see very, very likely, I mean, I mean, I can't predict the future, but according to what I have been seeing and, you know, my own experiences, uh, shortly after we will start to, uh, to see, uh, the market coming back because just like I said, because of the election, now that that's done, um, anything, any low, um, uh, low ball, low uh, goal that, you know, we were going to hit, we've either hit it or, you know, it's there or very close or something like that. And then it's just a matter of going up. So um, the question is, will it go fast or not? Um, it's possible it'll be steady. You know, if there's a drill, a gridlock, it'll probably keep going up steadily. I would prefer it to go really fast, <laughs> you know, but we'll see. It, it's probably 
uh, going to be uh, on the upward since then. And again, it's everything, the rates and everything has to do with supply and demand, supply and demand. So I would recommend to definitely keep watch uh, on all of the like freight waves that they have their own statistics, you know, uh, the website, we have that too. And uh, you can see if it's going up and down and stuff like that. But one of the issues or one of the things that I would strongly suggest is, you know, um, you, I, I'm telling you all of this stuff not to get scared, okay? Not to just, oh, let's just hand in the towel. Because, um, and then what? <laughs> you know, okay, you throw in the towel. Well, if you want to restart everything up later on, uh, you've, um, I mean, you, you're going to be on the back end of that next wave. And you want to be on the front end. So uh, the way I look at it is like right now when you see the, uh, you know, you're looking out in the ocean and you're waiting for that wave. I can, uh, in my perspective, I can see that wave already coming. Uh, the perspective of how far it is, I mean, that's always hard to gauge because it's hard to predict, but it ain't that far. It's very close. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, us talking about it, preparing for it. We know what we're uh, doing. I mean, we've been in business. When I say we, I'm talking about all of us, you, me. I mean, we're not some, you know, first month truck drivers. You know, <laughs> we're not newbies in this. We've been in industry long enough and we know that, you know, we have cycles in trucking and stuff like that. So uh, just uh, understand what's going on, uh, have a plan and execute. And uh, I mean, once this thing starts to go up, uh, and as you know, uh, I predict that it will be good, definitely, uh, you know, 2023, again, it's really hard to predict the future, <laughs> but if I were to predict, it's going to be probably same or better, um, but I'm leaning more towards the better. And then uh, 2024 um, uh, has very good chance, definitely better than 2023, but 2025 is going to be the very good one. Uh, but the thing is, if you're going to wait, if you were going to like to quit right now and get in on 2025, that's a bit too late because the time to get in is now when the prices are low. Uh, and if you're trying to get in at the top of the market, well, you're overpaying. So it's kind of catch 22, you know, which is why, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's not like, oh, when's the best time, the worst time. Uh, you know, downturns has its own pros and cons and the up top, you know, the up market has its own pros and cons, you know, but the best thing is once you're in the market, you can actually see what's going on and then adjust to it. And in the long term, you can do really, really good. I mean, that's how we've done it. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, five cycles, this is our fifth cycle. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much finishing up and um, yeah, 16 years uh, in trucking. Not as much as y'all, but um, some of y'all, but yeah, great question. Thank you. I hope that answered it. Um, I hope you did too. Yes. Patrick Davis, or Patrick Davis has a question. If you are buying a truck through the program, can you buy a second one and hire another driver? Yes. There's of course. Uh, with drivers, um, I mean, it, it's really important on, you know, what kind of driver, who you have and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, being a fleet manager is um, not that hard, but not that easy either, just so you know, uh, because it's pretty much uh, you have to have uh, the apprenticeship heart or, I don't know, the approach, you know, to be able to do that. Um, if you have more questions about that, let us know. Call me, uh, or call, call the office, write, write to us. We can help you with that. But yes. Okay. Um, where is the new office going to be located from Andrew Sanderlin? Yeah, so if you can see on the screen, this is DFW map. And yes, and uh, we are down here, down south between Dallas and Fort Worth and Cedar Hill, as you know, where that, you know, heart is. And this is going to be literally just... Uh, what is it? 7.7 .7 miles south of us in the next city, which is Midlothian. It's right here. You have, uh, yeah, so when you're in Midlothian, a lot of you, if you've driven through this, you'll see this Love's Truck Stop. 
it's right here on uh, uh, 67 and 287. So we're literally on the other side of the Love truck stop right here. Um, another question from Jamie and Joseph. Andrew, with all the Walmarts closing and they backed off their inventory, how do you think this will affect the market? Walmart has been a, pu a huge part of the transportation industry. I haven't heard that, have you? I mean, I hope that uh, the previous long explanation <laughs> kind of... Um, yeah. I've seen markets come contrast and expand again for the last five cycles okay I came into trucking in 2005 as a driver and then 2006 I started PDP trucking and everybody thought that 2008 was the worst thing that ever happened and that's me just literally coming into the industry and boy was I worried okay mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody knows what happened since then and uh, I mean to be honest I've lost count how many times I've survived the end of the world, you know, predictions, <laughs> just my generation. I mean, anybody who's older than me, I don't know. It's, I'm, to be honest, kind of sick and tired of even being worried about that type of stuff because I can't control that, okay? The news and everything else with Walmart, um, the thing is somebody's going to eat, somebody's going to have to, you know, truck, so if it's not Walmart, it's going to be somebody else. Uh, you know, if there's a vacant, uh, you know, thing, then it's going to be filled by somebody else. And there's plenty of other companies to fill it in. So I am, it's interesting. I've read that. That was interesting to read. I'm like, huh, okay. But um, I'm not too much worried about that uh, because everything that I just mentioned, it's there. Um, of course, in some ways, I would prefer to be, uh, you know, like my four-year-old right now that has no care in the world about what's going on in the economy, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But you and I as adults, uh, yeah, we have to go through these emotions. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that explains. If you have a follow-up question or something, let me know. <laughs> yeah, she just said... Um... Someone had put their input on it, saying they're talking about closing a few stores due to theft, but not all stores. Um, and that's really it. And yeah, because of uh, some states that allow. Yeah, as I mentioned, I read about that. Oh, and uh, again, I'm just... It's kind of here and there. It, it's kind of irrelevant to you and me at some point because, again, we are over the road trucking. <laughs> And uh, that's one of the key things why I love this type of trucking specifically. Uh, I've done, in my experience, I've done belly dump, rock and dump, uh, side dumps. Uh, uh, we've done uh, grain by now. We've done, uh, you know, van reefer. I mean, the only thing that I have not gotten myself into is hazmat stuff, like real, real hazmat. Um, but other than that, um, and I have uh, quite a few friends who are in oil fields and all of that. One of the best things that I like about over the road, it's probably the most stable out of the whole trucking. Um, and uh, I like that because you can, I don't know, I guess it's a preference thing maybe for some people, but you can uh, easily set up your life around it much easier, I should say. You know, whereas uh, some other trucking jobs, uh, you have to be like two, three shifts in. And I've done that when I was in construction. Uh, and then you're just like down. You can't do anything. You, you, you just sleep, sleep, sleep. Um, so it has its own pros and cons. Um, yeah, but... Um, um, Daryl okay. C., your thoughts on future prices of fuel? <laughs> What are your thoughts? Um, well, if you read uh, recently news that um, we're very low on the stockpile, the mm -hmm. emergency stockpiles, um, that will be interested. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, on the political side, they're trying to uh, do everything they can to lower the fuel prices. <laughs> because uh, it, it doesn't look good on their side. So I, I kind of, if I can't trust 
all the people, at least I can trust their motive of being a human. <laughs> and uh, one of the things is, you know, they want to make themselves look good. So they're going to try to lower it as much as possible. Um, the most important thing to me on the fuel prices, it's not really even the fuel prices, it's demand, supply and demand. Because if we have, uh, if the demand and uh, supply and demand is in our favor, where there's not enough uh, supply but too much demand, it doesn't, it's irrelevant what the fuel prices are. I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't want to have the prices all the way at like $5 a gallon everywhere in the country because that really lowers anybody's want to go out and buy stuff. And because, you know, you can't have that for long term, at least, because people will be prevented from spending money. And that's, you know, the supply and demand type of thing. So... Yes, but uh, the fuel prices, uh, even though they're high, um, I would really like to see some demand go up. Um, I think that uh, in some ways, uh, looking at the history, unless uh, we strive to, you know, as the United States, as if we strive to become energy independent again, uh, then the fuel prices will go down. Until that's in the works or in talks, Unfortunately, we're going to be where we at. Um, and yeah, but again, what I like is that regardless of the fuel prices, we will most likely have the supply and demand reversed soon, uh, or at least sooner than the fuel prices going down. Okay. Um, from Bill Lockard, what about cattle or pigs? Is that something PDP wants to explore hauling? I guess for them to haul with us. We've, um, I thought that we already looked into this. Um, well I remember, too. I remember talking about this, and I think it has to do with uh, how the, you know, the load is moved and stuff like that. And on the insurance side, see, I, and that's really the biggest question is like, what about the insurance? Because if the insurance is skyrocket high. I mean, the question is, are you willing to pay that extra, <laughs> you know? And if it is, um, it's kind of like the same thing with hay or like harvest bulk loads. We've done those and uh, it was kind of interesting because we thought it was going to be all of this money just, you know, dropping from everywhere. And uh, it actually turned out to be similar. I I'm talking about like the net profit and everything. It turned out to be similar as van. So I was like, huh, okay, all this hassle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, why not just do van? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. um, yes, but uh, I would say reach out to the office. We can check it out uh, for sure. I can't really give it to you 100% answer right now, but I think if I'm not mistaken that we did check into this. So reach out to us uh, you know, directly and we can talk about it. Okay. Um, long haul loads are not really priced to run with fuel at five sixty-seven a gallon. Um, Apex fuel card is an asset and helps keeps us competitive. Agree on the Apex fuel card. Some discounts are fifty cents a gallon. Yeah. So with the long haul, and um, I mean, uh, I get what you're saying. Um, historically, uh, another I guess uh, fact. Uh, whenever the market is towards our favor um, or uh, towards the trucker's favor, um, most of the time I've seen everybody starts hauling long uh, miles loads because at that time, you know, uh, you might as well just do easy, uh, less, less loading and unloading and just more miles. But uh, when it's uh, the opposite, like right now, um, it's the opposite. It's, it's, you want to do some shorter uh, loads, uh, but not too short, of course, because if you do like, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 miles and they're paying you $10, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, on, on the grand scheme of things, you won't be able to make enough per week, you know, to, to gross how much you need. 
So it, you might be getting great rate per mile, but not total that you can do because of traffic and all this other stuff. So, uh, but yeah, so it's very important to have that balance. And this is probably one of the most important things to understand right now. Uh, with the expenses that you have, you need to try to um, maximize your net as much as possible right now because it's very tight and the best way to do it is to run uh, mid-size loads uh, miles you know so if that's implying i mean long haul loads are not really priced to run with fuel at 5.67 you're right and anybody who's doing cross country right now uh you're gonna you're not gonna make money much unless i mean for the majority part the loads that are available, it's going to be the, the rate per mile drops significantly any time of the year uh, when you haul very long miles versus short miles, you know, the rate per miles. So uh, and because of the market where it's at, it doesn't make sense uh, to have, um, you know, long miles all the time because then you're just not going to make much net. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Um, what else we got? Okay, um, Mario Sims asks, when will the fuel start back posting to the dashboard after each transaction? Oh, that's a great question. Peter, when will that happen? Okay. <laughs> Wait, that hasn't been done yet? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'll check into <laughs> that. That's a good um, comment. <laughs> yes, we made that as a temporary measure. Um, but with the updates that we've been working, okay. They're posted daily at the end of the day, but they are not posting right afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll check into that and we will have that done this week. So I'm sorry about that. I thought that was done. <laughs> okay. AB5, question mark. AB5. Uh, there's so much talk about AB5. Um, which part exactly? I think, uh, Daryl, when you say that, I mean, just uh, as a whole in California. Um, so let me tell you something. I actually had uh, my um, accountant call me uh, like, Peter, um, this is like, this is big deal. Did you hear about this? This AB5, like, oh my gosh. And I'm just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know what? Um, they keep on posting all of these different things about, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And uh, with every single one, they keep on pushing, then it's, it pedals back, then pushing pedals back. Um, all I can say, and I can say this for sure, um, it's not in Texas. It's not looking to be in Texas. If you notice, I mean, Texas... <laughs> is very pro-business compared to California. So if you're in California, I mean, I feel really sorry for you. Um, and I can't do anything about it. Um, that, that is probably the number one reason why I am in Texas. <laughs> and if you, if you believe in that way, then come on over to Texas. <laughs> Otherwise, please stay in California. Oh, stay there. <laughs> stay there. Um, but um, I mean, the chances of it going to be federal, especially because of the gridlock, if it hasn't been done by now, it ain't going to happen at least for the next two years. It's going to be stuck again because of how the political parties are right now. So that's good news. Uh, what's going to happen after 2024? We'll see. Um, but um, it's one thing if you you know, completely cut out uh, small business owner operators, independent contractors from a state like California, which that is a huge state, like it's a big deal. And what they're doing there, it's, I mean, just, it's them. But to do that in the whole country, I guess I can see why they're trying to do it. But the likelihood of that, it's, it's so slim that uh, I'm just not going to worry about it. Because to be honest, I have plenty of things to worry about. Okay, and you do too. <laughs> so um, if you're going to 
you know, put too much, uh, you know, sweat and tear into this. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's not worth it. Uh, you got probably much better things you can worry about, like family or I don't know, just anything else, you know. But uh, I told my uh, accountant, I said, look, unless it's actually like here right now, uh, I'm, I'm just not going to, I'm just going to, no, don't, don't even give me all of that whoosh and wash and, you know, stuff that uh, the news uh, tries to scare people. I'm just not following, uh, fa falling for it, okay? Because regardless, it has nationwide, it has very, very little chance. And in order for Texas to actually have that here, it would have to be at least nationwide. And then uh, Texas would have to be completely turned blue for that to happen. So uh, what's that saying? Until the pigs fly and something like that? No? Oh, when pigs fly? You'll do it when pigs fly? Yeah. Which, <laughs> what are the chances of pigs flying? I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, so... Mm -hmm. I'm just not worried about it, and don't worry about it, too, because, yeah, you have more important things to worry about. <laughs> okay, um, let's get through these next few questions. From Tone, will new trucks be all automatic, or will some be manual? Also, will they be Kenworths or Freightliners? Uh, the, the ones that we're trying to get is KWs, uh, 780s. Uh, we occasionally get... 680s. No, 780s. Yeah, they're 780s. Occasionally we get a Fredliner, um, but uh, we're trying to get anything else but Volvos. <laughs> okay, for now. <laughs> um, other than that... They're all automatics. Yes. Uh, as far as manuals, we have some manuals that they are do. still in the fleet. They're Volvos. Um, so I would recommend, like, uh, you know, talk, well... I've just, mm -hmm. I, okay, <laughs> listen, I have today, as of today, I have two owner operators and I know who they are and I've told them this, like, look, uh, you should get automatic because like one of them, actually both of them had uh, leg problems because of, I'm sorry, the other foot, because of pressing, you know, the paddles and stuff like that uh, and clutch and, you know, they were really like, adamant about it. I gotta have a manual you know I just just I just gotta have it you know and um, unfortunately both of them had to retire because of their leg and uh, I'm just like they've been with us for a long time and uh, it, it was just sad um, if you really really gotta have a manual I mean look of course there's not I mean, go for it. <laughs> but uh, there are so many different reasons why we're switching to automatics because uh, fuel economy, uh, you know, not having to press that uh, <clears throat> traffic. I mean, there's just... Um, so, yes, they're mostly going to be automatics. Um, yeah. Not trying to offend anybody. I'm just kind of <laughs> speaking the facts. <laughs> Can Apex give us notice daily on what fuel prices will go up or down and how much it will change? Oh, app yes. The app. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, they have it. I think what he's referring to is the prices is changing so much that Apex isn't really keeping up. They're doing the best that they can. And when I've asked them before, they say they change hourly. So they try to keep up with the price changes as much as possible. So, yes. I think that... Um, out of all the companies that do deal with uh, technology and, um, you know, factoring, fuel cards, all of that, I will say that, uh, you know, Apex is probably one of the most advanced in that field. Um, but uh, ha being in IT myself, there's only so much you can do when the data that you have is the way it's provided. So... One of the things I actually read is that uh, some of these big guys uh, like Uber, Freight, uh, Amazon, and uh, Convoy are uh, asking for an, a, a standardized uh, API uh, to unify the whole trucking industry uh, electronically. 
And that I'm really excited about that because that will be huge, huge pros for all of you guys. I mean, we can integrate into our system and uh, the dispatching will be, I mean, it will be so simple, so fast. Um, I mean, there's a lot of pros about that. But my point is uh, Apex has the best that there is. Mm -hmm. And um, there's only so much how fast you can do with how fast it changes. I've actually talked to this uh, a while back uh, when we had uh, fuel prices drop really fast in 2015, mm -hmm. also with Apex, and they're like, yeah, we're, we have this idea uh, and we'll push it, and they did. But um, yeah, I think uh, the best thing that you can do is uh, making sure that you're always on that app. When I drive or when I go and you know book a load or recover or something like that, I always use the app, and uh, it's important to look at those uh, taxes in there, by the way, but that's another topic. Um, yes, but uh, that app is pretty advanced to give you, you know, as accurate as it can be in the time of data change that it, ha that it is. So, okay. yes. Um, Robert Ellis, what about the Connecticut mileage tax that starts after the first of the year? How are we to work that? Yes, um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Arkansas actually had this already started, I want to say, a couple of years ago. I want to say two years ago, and we haven't really charged you guys for that. We just paid it because it was oh, kind of nice a small amount. Yeah, but um, I am. I, I saw that. Uh, we we kind of spoke about it with Myra. Uh, but right now, it's a bit uh, too little information to say because we've uh, requested. We, uh, Myra and I are, you know, like looking into that, basically, I can say. <laughs> and we'll probably let you know, but uh, it all depends what it is because um, last thing I want is to have PDP known for all, you know, like these small charges and stuff like that. Like, um, it's it just depends if it's small something in the bucket we'll probably just cover it um like we did with uh arkansas but uh, yeah we, i don't know we'll see okay bill lockard his Too early. isn't really a question just a statement manual is the only way to go automatics have issues i've had them and they cost <laughs> a lot to replace kenlers have have nice and easy hydraulics assured clutch okay <clears throat> and I agree with you that too because I know I've driven clutch. I've, I mean, that was actually my first. So um, go for it if you can, but uh, we're switching more towards automatic on our side, unless there is like a special request or something like that. But other than that, we most likely will be getting more automatics. <clears throat> All right, another question from Nicholas McKenzie. How do we handle a receiver that holds us for three to five days with the load on our trailer? Sitting outside the receiver and they are paying us $250 a day, who do we have in our corner to help us avoid that or charge them more for keeping the load on our trailer due to miscommunication? All our offices can do is just email them. What is the best solution for this? Well, Nicholas, that is a great question. I haven't heard this. If you're in this situation currently, I would like you to call um, the shipping team and speak to Cynthia and then come speak to me. We can invoice them for um, holding you there for detention, not guaranteeing that you will get it, but we can invoice them and um, shipping side can handle that by giving them a call, being the middleman so that way you're not frustrated talking to the broker and you know doing something like getting us blacklisted. So definitely call the office if that's what you're currently going through so we can get that taken care of for you. Yes, and please, please guys, make sure you understand. We're on your side, okay? we. We want to, I mean, this is literally our job, yes, but uh, we're on your side and that's what uh, we are here for. So, yes, definitely involve us in this. Uh, you don't have to go through this alone. I mean, we are your back office support. Um, and uh, unfortunately, when stuff like this happens, uh, that's when we, you know, do uh, get involved. And um, yes. I will say that, uh, you know, Cynthia, mm -hmm. uh, shipping specialist team, Meredith, yeah. uh, Meredith yes, um, 
but I mean, like, even when it gets to billion, yes, you, I, I mean, we're here for you guys. That's the main thing. We're here for you, but we can't force them to pay. We do as much as we can, but, but we try. But we're on your side, and we will do everything we can to force them without breaking their arm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, that's yeah. kind of like what we're here for, though, <laughs> you know. So, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that was the last question. Can you physically talk to someone at the receiver where your trailer is sitting? I mean, yeah, why not? Sure. Talk to. Uh, I mean, you're talking about yet? us or y'all? At the receiver where your Does the trailer is get the sitting. Whole 250? Yes, Daryl, see, or, well, the driver, it's considered detention or layover, and we don't charge the full 15%. We just take 3% of the detention because we still have to factor that into Apex. Yes. Okay. Mm, is that it? And Adam Gentry, and they know you force. can't force them. That's why they don't pay. We just take it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beep. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but that's the thing, though. Like, uh, um, I've, you know, I've had to deal with brokers, and they get under my skin. Um, but uh, what matters is the result, at least in my opinion. Like, uh, at the end, I really don't care what they call me as long as if we get the result. And that's what we're trying to do for you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. No more questions. All righty. So, yes, thank you. Let's see. see can... <clears throat> that's me. Okay. Yeah, so you guys can continue talking there. But it's already uh, close to the end of the hour. So... Let's go ahead and wrap this up. These are great questions. Thank you guys for asking all of that. Uh, if you do have more questions, please email to me directly, email to us, I mean, call us. Uh, we want to talk to you guys about these. Uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance, but there's actually a link available uh, that you guys can um, um, fill out. It's a, let me see, hold on. Let me copy it and paste it right now again. Okay, so there is a survey or it's just a four question uh, thing. Uh, it will be very helpful if you guys could fill that out while you're waiting or something like right now we're, when we're doing the next thing. But please fill that out if you haven't. Um, we just want to hear from you. We want to know how else we could help you. Um, yeah. So uh next thing let's see next thing yes let's do the the drawings sure yeah so just a reminder um everybody that's joined um you guys are winners because every single one of you are getting three positive points on your bto cards if you don't know what that is, please reach out to the office uh, because that's very, very important. Uh, a lot of things are, you know, based on that, uh, especially your most valuable operator award. So, um, yes, check that out uh, and talk to the office if you need that. But let's do that right now. All righty. There you go. There's going to be two winners. Uh, for $300 each. Now, everybody who's here already getting uh, the three positive two, points. You're not in the Christmas spirit. I want to give three. <laughs> I'm trying, you guys. I'm really trying for y'all. Uh, who put you up to this? <laughs> well, let's see how we do with the two. Okay, how about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. One, two, three. Let's see. And the first winner is... Uh, oh, Daryl C. Well, yeah, Daryl C. Yay, Daryl. You're really ready. I think because you spoke up and asked a question. Mm -hmm. no? Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at that. Okay, oh 300. God, are you serious? Yes, Daryl. <laughs> awesome. Yes, congratulations. Awesome. Merry Christmas. Congrats. Merry Christmas. All righty. <laughs> oh. Yes, there you go. Okay, the next winner is, and by the way, yes, you do have to be here and answer if you're here. So the next winner, 
Mm. Greg Larson. Yes, congratulations, Greg. Are you here? Yes, can you? Yes, there you go. Greg, congratulations. Merry Christmas. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes, $300 coming your way. Thank you, thank you. All right, I know right where to spend it. <laughs> All righty. Well, yeah, let's do one more. One more, yeah. I guess let's do one. Sure, okay, one more. <laughs> Okay, so again, you have to be here. Oh, let me get this. Okay, you have to be here and present. And then after that, we'll go to most valuable operator award. Half of it goes to me. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the winner for the third one is... <laughs> Storm Duncan. <laughs> Congratulations, Storm. Are you here? Gotta meet yourself. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, I'm congratulations. Here. Why are you laughing? Oh, I was just, it's just funny. <laughs> okay, what's the funny one? Storm, half of that has to go to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Congratulations. Merry Christmas to you, Storm. Yes. Alrighty. So we're finished with that part. And now, uh, hold on, don't show it yet. Let me refresh this page. Oh, yeah, it kicked me out. Nope, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> That's the wrong. Wait, where is it? Hold on. Oh, it's here. No. What? Peter. Sorry. There you go. Okay. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was that? Alrighty. So, most valuable operator. So, as you know, uh, uh, it's being looked at as the safety and then uh, financial performance. So, uh, right now, number one is Mario Sims. Wow! Woohoo! Thousand dollars winner, Mario Sims. Okay, second place we got Jake Hughes. Congratulations! Yes, that's a seven hundred fifty dollars uh, winning right there. And then the last one, but at least we got Lee Burrell. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, and since you have more than one truck, it's the number four, just FYI. VIP carriers, number four. So congratulations. Uh, yes, you'll be getting $250. Uh, um, if you have any um, questions or anything that you want to talk to us, please uh, let us know. Thank you. Thank you for all that you guys do. Be safe out there with the weather, everything that's going on. I've heard a storm coming through. And um, yeah, we're feeling it here. But uh, <laughs> definitely have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. And just don't forget that the next meeting we have for this is Monday, uh, January 16th. Um, we'll see. Maybe we'll bring somebody on or something like that. But that's a Monday, January 16th. It's also at 6 p.m. Yes. We're glad that you were able to make it here. And just blessings to you. Stay safe. And yes, God bless. Bye.